In this video, we're going to discuss the factors that will favor E1 reaction as well as all the steps involved in an E1 mechanism. E1 stands for Unimolecular Elimination Reaction. There are two components that are involved in an elimination reaction. One of them is the substrate that has an alkyl group attached to a leaving group, R, LG, and then the other one is a base. E1 is unimolecular because the rate of the reactions depends only on the concentration of the substrate. E1 is therefore a first order reaction. Now let's look at the factors that will favor E1 reaction. Since E1 involves the formation of carbocation, the reaction is going to go the fastest when the alkyl group is tertiary since it will form the most stable carbocation. This is then followed by the secondary substrate. Primary substrate is not conducive for E1 because primary carbocation is highly unstable. As for the bases, strong bases will favor E2 mechanism. So E1 mechanism will only require weak base like water, alcohol, iodide, cyanide, and thiolates. Polar protic solvent like water and alcohols will favor E1. Polar protic solvent contains hydrogen atom that's connected to an electronegative atom like nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, and it's capable of hydrogen bonding. So therefore, it's going to help to stabilize the carbocation intermediate. As for the temperature, higher temperature is going to encourage elimination reaction to take place. This is a key point when competing against nucleophilic substitution reaction. As for the stereochemistry, there is no requirement for the substrate in E1 reaction. All that is required is to have a CH bond next to a carbocation intermediate. We're going to use s 2 bromobutane as our substrate. The first step in E1 reaction is the departure of the leaving group, just like in SN1. In our example, bromine is going to be the leaving group, so it's going to leave, and then it will form a carbocation and a bromide ion. Since the carbocation form is not stable, this first step is going to take the longest time. That's why step 1 of E1 mechanism is often called the rate determining step or the rate limiting step. The second step is deprotonation, which is removal of the adjacent hydrogen by a base. We're going to use water as our base in this example, and our water is going to remove a proton that is next to a carbocation. So if we look at this carbocation, at carbon-3, there are two hydrogens, and let's just remove one of it. So base removes a proton, CC double bond is formed, so we get cis but 2 in Depending on whichever hydrogen that it removes, we will get either cis but 2 in or trans but 2 in So there are possibility of two products. Now, in addition to this, there are three hydrogens connected to carbon-1. So we can also remove one of the proton there, and that's going to give us a different product, which is built one in. As you can see, there are possibilities of multiple products formed from an E1 mechanism. When S2-butane undergoes elimination reaction with water, we obtain three products. E1 reactions always follow Zaitsev's rule, which states that the major product is always the most stable alkene. Therefore, from the three products we obtain, transbutuene is the major product because that's the most stable alkene. With that, we're done discussing the E1 mechanism. I have other videos on SN1, SN2, and E2 mechanisms. Do look for them in the description box below. Here's a video that I've handpicked for you. Do check out our app that's available in both Google Play and App Store. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. If you find this video helpful, be sure to like and share it with someone. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you won't miss future videos. Your support means a lot to me.